Hello, this is Dr. Ominde. So we discussed the medial, thigh, and the femoral triangle in this um, series. So um, the femoral triangle, okay? So that's where we are going to begin. The borders of the femoral triangle laterally is uh, the sartorius muscle, medially is the adductor longus muscle, and the base is formed by the iguanal ligament that usually runs from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. So from lateral to medial, we have the femoral nerve within the triangle. Remember, femoral nerve is not within the femoral sheath. Then from the nerve, we have the femoral artery and femoral veins, and these are within the femoral sheath. And we also have the lymphatics that are contained in the medial compartment of the femoral sheath. So these are the contents of the femoral triangle. From lateral to medial, we have femoral nerve, artery and vein, and the lymphatics, but the nerve is not within the femoral sheath. So, inguinal ligament from anterior superior leg spine mm. to the pubic tubercle, um, sartorius oh. forms the lateral border, and the adductor longus forms the medial border. So, you have your femoral vein, femoral artery, and femoral nerve in that order. And remember, we also have lymphatics on the medial aspect. So, here are the lymphatics. So, from lateral to medial, femoral nerve, femoral artery, vein, and lymphatics. And the nerve is not within the femoral sheath. The rest are within the femoral sheath. That's your inguinal ligament. That's your sartorius and adductor longus. So um, the femoral artery and vein are within the femoral sheath. And the femoral artery usually gives out the profunda femoral artery, which is the deep artery of the thigh, and also gives the lateral and medial circumflex femoral arteries around this region of the femoral triangle. Then from this image, you can see this is at the... Femoral artery is usually a continuation of external iliac artery at the mid inguinal point. Mid inguinal point is a midpoint between anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis. So external iliac continues as femoral artery. Then femoral artery um, will give, this is the, um, um, they call it common femoral artery. It will give the profunda um, femoral artery, the medial circumflex, and the lateral circumflex. Circumflex because they're going around the femur. So this one goes towards the medial aspect, this one laterally. And after it has given these three branches, the circumflex and the profunda femoris, the femoral now is called superficial femoral artery that will enter the adductor canal, then exits the adductor canal through the adductor hiatus. And from there, the name changes to popliteal artery. Then we have an, some anastomosis that you need to understand. We have the trochanteric anastomosis and the cruciate anastomosis. So the trochanteric anastomosis is formed by two superior branches and two inferior branches. So the two superior branches are descending branches of inferior and superior gluteal arteries. And the two um, inferior branches are ascending branches of medial and lateral circumflex. So you have um, from up descending branches of superior and inferior gluteal arteries. And coming from down, you have ascending branches of medial circumflex and ascending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery. So that's your um, trochanteric anastomosis. Then we have the cruciate anastomosis. Which vessels form the cruciate anastomosis? Cruciate from crucifix. They form a crucifix like a cross. Okay. So you have descending branch of inferior gluteal artery, ascending branch of first perforator from profunda femoris, then transverse branch from lateral circumflex femoral, and a transverse branch from <sighs> medial circumflex femoral. So that's your cruciate anastomosis. So descending branch from inferior gluteal, ascending from first perforator of uh, profunda femoris, transverse branch from lateral circumflex, and transverse from medial circumflex femoral artery. And remember we said common femoral, gives profunda femoris, lateral and medial circumflex, then continues a superficial femoral, enters the adductor canal, and at the adductor hiatus, it becomes the popliteal artery. So um, these are the, the branches. That's your profunda femoris, the medial circumflex, and the lateral circumflex. And those are the perforators. So these arteries, that's how they form the cruciate anastomosis. Okay.
So the flow of the femoral triangle is formed by this muscle, iliopsoas, pectineus, and adductor longus muscle. And the femoral sheath is formed anteriorly by um, transversalis fascia and posteriorly by fascia that covers the iliopsoas muscle. So fascia iliaca posteriorly and transversalis fascia anteriorly. What are the contents of the femoral sheath? On the, it, it's divided into three compartments. The lateral compartment has femoral artery, intermediate compartment has femoral vein, and the most medial compartment has um, deep lymph nodes, which you call the cloquet lymph nodes within the femoral canal. So the femoral canal is within the medial compartment of the femoral sheath. So these deep lymph nodes, the cloquet lymph nodes in the femoral canal, usually drain the clitoris in females and the glands penis in the males. So then we go to the anterior compartment of the thigh. The cutaneous innervation is by lateral, intermediate, medial, and posterior cutaneous nerves of thigh. Lateral, medial, posterior, and intermediate cutaneous nerves of the thigh. And within the same anterior compartment of the thigh, we have the cribriform fascia. The fascia latter is modified to form cribriform fascia. This is perforated fascia at the femoral triangle because it contains the opening of the saphenous vein as it empties into the femoral vein. So this cribriform fascia, um, this sorry, great saphenous vein is carrying blood that drains the medial side of the dorsal venous arc, and it may be duplicated distal to the knee. Usually, great saphenous vein has 10 to 20 valves. The boundaries of the adductor canal laterally is formed by vastus medialis. Posteriorly is adductor longus and magnus, and anterior medially is the sartorius muscle. So those are the borders of the adductor canal. Laterally, vastus medialis. Posteriorly, the adductor longus and magnus, and anterior medially, you have the sartorius muscle. What are the contents of the adductor canal? You have the termination of femoral nerve, which you call the saphenous nerve. Then you have nerve to vastus medialis, a terminal portion of obturator nerve. We have femoral artery and vein. Because of the adductor hiatus, they will now continue as popliteal and also lymph vessels. So these are the five com contents of the adductor canal. Saphenous nerve or femoral, nerve to vastus medialis, terminal part of obturator nerve. So you have three nerves and then femoral artery and vein and the lymphatic vessels. Which muscles are in the anterior compartment of the thigh? Iliosoas, which is a major flexor, sartorius, which is the talus muscle, pectineus and quadriceps. And quadriceps is formed by four cord rectus femoris, vastus lateralis medialis, and vastus intermedius. So these are the muscles in the anterior compartment, iliosoas, iliacus, and psoas. They come to insert on the lesser trochant of the femur. Then you have pectineus here, adductor longus, and this is your talus muscle, your sartorius, and your quadriceps femoris are here, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, and vastus lateralis. Again, these are the muscles, pectineus, adductor longus, adductor magnus, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis rectus femoris has been cut so this is your vastus intermedius this is your iliacus this is psoas together iliopsoas to the lesser trochanter what's the blood supply in the anterior compartment of the thigh mainly you have the superficial branches of femoral arteries like superficial circumflex iliac superficial epigastric superficial external pedendal deep external pedendal and descending genicular. It can be asked to list the branches of the femoral artery. So it has superficial and deep. So the superficial are superficial circumflex iliac, superficial epigastric, superficial external pedendal, deep external pedendal and descending genicular. Then we have deep branches, profunda femoris, medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. So profunda femoris, medial circumflex and lateral circumflex. And remember this, Profunda femoris has uh, perforators. Usually, they can be three or four when you include the deep femoral. So, what's the innervation of anterior compartment of the thigh? Mainly femoral nerve. Remember, is root value L2 to L4. So, it will innervate um, iliopsoas and the muscles in the anterior compartment, the quadriceps, and this usually cause um, hip flexion mainly by iliopsoas and sartorius. Then um, um the knee extension is caused by the the quadriceps muscles so the medial compartment of the thigh has the following muscles the gracilis adductor longus adductor brevis and adductor magnus and we also have the obturator externa so these are the five muscles in the medial compartment gracilis the three adductors and obturator externa so this is your adductor longus adductor magnus this is your adductor hiatus here 
When you remove the adductor longus, you're able to appreciate adductor brevis. This is your obturator external. So the medial compartment of the thigh is supplied by obturator artery. Where does obturator artery come from? It's a branch of internal iliac. Remember, the aorta branches into two common iliacs, right and left, and each common iliac divides into internal and external. The external at mid inguinal point becomes femoral. So it's this internal that gives obturator artery. Muscles in the medial compartment of the thigh are innervated by obturator nerve. Root value is L2 to L4. We also have tibial nerve that innervates the hamstring portion of adductor magnus. Muscles in the medial compartment, what do they do? They cause adduction at the hip joint. Remember, in the anterior compartment, you are causing flexion at the hip and extension at the knee. But in the medial compartment, they cause adduction at the hip. So you, um, this, you need to read this, discuss the attachments and the modifications of fascia lata. Remember, it's modified to form cribriform fascia, intermuscular septum, iliotibial band. So those are the modifications of fascia lata. What are the muscle attachments and functions of, and attachments of fascia lata? So you need to know that. And which arteries form cruciate and trochanteric? Remember, cruciate is a cross. So descending branch of inferior gluteal, ascending branch of first perforator of profunda femoris, and transverse branches of medial and lateral circumflex. Then the trochanteric anastomosis is formed by descending branches of um, inferior gluteal, descending branch of superior gluteal artery, as ascending branch of circumflex medial femoral, and ascending branch of lateral circumflex femoral. Set the anatomical basis for femoral hernias and why do they occur more commonly? Remember the femoral hernias, when you um, move the viscera from the abdomen through the femoral canal, uh, through the, yeah, the opening of the femoral canal into the medial compartment of the femoral sheath. That's what forms femoral hernias. And how are they different from inguinal hernias? Femoral hernias will occur lateral to the pubic tubercle while inguinal hernias occur medial to the pubic tubercle. Femoral hernias are more common in women because the wide pelvis um, uh, is correlated with a wider opening, femoral canal opening. So women are more predisposed to femoral hernias. But remember, men are more predisposed to inguinal hernias because of the, um, in cases of patent processus vaginalis, especially for the indirect um, type of inguinal hernias. So you need to be able to discuss um, these questions. Thank you very much.